you're here in New York. Mm-hmm. You you kind of get your career going in a, in the most minute way, but you you starting to get out there. You you're a VJ. You're a talking head. Um, working for Viacom, making minimal dollars on shows like Best Week Ever. You have a stint over at um Sirius. Mm-hmm. How did you even get into those buildings to begin with? I've always been very um, tenacious and backed it up with talent. And that's been like a positive and like, it's kind of like a gift and a curse, right? Because some people are really um, incredible marketers. Mm -hmm. Like they, like I've had to become really good at marketing, but in the beginning I had all the talent but I did not know how to market myself. And it used to frustrate me so much because I would see other people who I knew just weren't really doing anything, but they were so good at making it look like they're doing something. Welcome to the music industry. Welcome to the industry. No, that was the music industry. Like, I just was like, but I know that this is not, this is bullshit, but they put a little twinkle and a little a little glitter on it and folks look like they really out here and it used to drive me crazy because I really am an authentic artist and I'd be like that's why I had to give up music because I realized like oh what I actually value has no value (laughs) in this space like in a real way like me being like a consummate lyricist you know and really caring about the the au revoir of work and really trying to create and arrange Folks is like, yeah, but what's your story? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck are we talking about my story for? Did you hear that song? Was that was a good song. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh yeah, but who do you work with? Who's your producer? You know, like all these things that ultimately it's like, you either like the song or you don't like the song, which is what I love about comedy. There's no, none of that in comedy. Comedy is, are you funny? That's it. Are you funny or not? So what I started, um, what, what tipped it all off was really, I was doing spoken word. Mm-hmm. I was doing spoken word and one night I was at the New York Poets Cafe in New York and I ran into Caduce who was a host on TRL and he was um he was there at just randomly at the show and I went up to him and I was I mean nobody knew me but I went up to him and I was like hey so you're on MTV and I need to be on MTV so we need to stay in touch. Like there's moments like that where I'm like who do you think you are? Uh, but nonetheless, it got said. So, and he responded in kind and he was like, all right. And so for the next two and a half years, like we would touch base. And over that time, he tried to get me like interviews and it would, every time it would fall through. And then one particular time I was, um, I, it was, it was, it was the release of college dropout. And I had interviewed um, Kanye at Sirius. And the way that I got into the Sirius Satellite Radio building was, again, spoken word. Like, I was doing spoken word, and I was at a show, and one of the program directors, like, was at the show. And he asked me to come down there for an interview, and I thought it was going to be an interview, like, because I'm a poet. Mm -hmm. But it was a job interview. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) So we do the whole interview, like he he did this interview with me on air and then was like, so that was a job interview. I'd really love for you to like have a show here at Sirius. And I was like, what are you talking about? So, you know, but I say all that to say, when I say tenacious and the talent to back it up, it's like, I could have showed up there for that interview and completely like been not impressive, but I went in there proud of the work I'm doing and had a really like clear, distinct tone when I was having that interview. And that is what let him know that I would be good on air. Um, and, and then with the, with, when I went to see college drop out, I ran into Caduce and I had demand, I had made this whole big deal that I needed to be in VIP that night. I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> like, I was just like, I cannot be in the pit. And I had to go through so many hoops prez to get into VIP that night. I had to wait outside the Fallon show, uh, the, the tonight show. They were like, we're going to be in a, in a, in a black escalade. I'm like, all right, cool. I come outside. It's like 32 degrees. There's 17 escalades. And I'm just like, damn it. How am I? Like, it was just foolery, foolery. But I made it to the show. I was in VIP and I ran into Caduce. So, and he was like, oh shit, 
they're hiring. I'm going to get you an interview. And I had the job in two weeks. Oh my God. And that was one of those times though, where like, he could have gotten me the interview, but if I went in there and I didn't really know my stuff, it wouldn't have mattered. You, you know, and what do they say? Luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Absolutely. And that's exactly, so, that's exactly, you, 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 you're touching on so many great points here. But again, and I got to point this out, that fearlessness. People. You know what though, Prez? It's like, it's fearlessness, but it's also like, I don't bet on nobody but myself. It, so. It's, it's like, as much as it's fearlessness, it's also an, it's also like a, a necessity. Like, cause I know that ain't nobody else going to get it for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember when I first moved to LA and I was like hanging out with this chick who, um, a friend of mine was like, oh, she's an actress. So y'all should hang out, you know, so that you can network and get to know each other. And we, we like got up for, for lunch and she was like, yeah, you know, um, I, I forgot, I think I was, I was telling her that I had just gotten an audition and she was like, oh, my agent never calls me. And that was so different. Cause it was like, no, I got myself the audition. <laughs> like she was like, my agent never calls me. And it's like, why are you waiting for somebody to call you? But, but that's the point I'm trying to make because earlier in the conversation, you were talking about how you're doing the spoken word and caduces in the building and you go and introduce yourself to them. Do you know how many people would see somebody of that stature and just be afraid? They, they would just be, well, you know, I, I'll wait. We'll meet at a different time. But really taking the bull by the horns, manning up, woman up in your case, and say, let me just go and introduce myself to and say, I need to be on MTV. Let's see. What's the worst that to happen? Exactly. Yes, that it's is like, the point. <laughs> but everyone's so afraid to be an embarrassed. And it's like, who the fuck is this person for you to be embarrassed by? Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, ultimately, that's what I have. I feel like it's 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 not it's not even a fearlessness. It's like it, it takes a lot to embarrass me. It takes a lot because I don't really. Um, in order for me to be embarrassed, I must hold this person like in like a higher esteem. And for mm -hmm. all intents and purposes. You got to be like Felicia Rashad for me to be you know what I'm like they, they, you got to be levels. And I just feel like a lot of us just give everybody else so much power over our security. You mm -hmm. know, like we, you know, like having food in your teeth and you're like, oh, my God. And it's like everybody gets food in their teeth. Like, right. I mean, right. it's, it's not the end of the world, but there's like this perfection that we want everybody to believe that we're existing in. And so people oftentimes don't do that. They don't take that extra leap because they don't want to not be perfect. They don't want to not be presented. And they, and I think a lot of folks feel like I didn't get to prepare. And I will say like, I am somebody who is really good off the top. Um, like I kind of have a knack for quick thinking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, wherever that conversation was going to go, I know that I would have been able to handle. And so some people don't feel comfortable with that. And that's fair. You know, like you, but but then the way you work around that is you're like, hi, I would love if we can like meet at another point, <laughs> right? Like, it's like, I just want to introduce myself. Here's my card. If there's any way possible, I'd love for us to set time to meet because I feel like, you know, we can connect. And the worst thing they can say is I'm not interested. It's the worst and like, if you're, and if you're shattered by that, then this isn't the business for you. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.